What's up everybody? Today I'm going to continue my series in the top five AP physics test questions. Today we're going to focus on momentum and what I've seen over the years to be the most common questions on the test. If you could do me a favor when you're all done, when you take the actual exam, come back to this. Let me know if any of these actually show up. All right, let's get started. So number one should be no surprise and that's being able to solve a conservation of momentum problem, um, either a collision type problem or an explosion problem. Remember the key for this is you just look at your initial momentum, final momentum, set them equal to each other. The absolute most common question is what would be called a completely inelastic collision. So say you have a mass M and let's say a mass big M and this has an initial velocity V initial and this one is usually at rest and they collide and they stick together as one. So you would just say, again, P initial equals P final, and you'd go MV, that's the initial momentum of this by itself, and then that equals M plus M, because they're stuck together, times the final velocity. So if they asked you to solve for the final velocity, you would just say it's MVO over little m plus big M. The other common one you might see is what we'd call an explosion problem. So imagine you have a person, two people, and maybe they're going to push off each other. Okay, usually they're ice skaters. One goes one way, the other goes the other way. In this case, your initial momentum is zero. And then this person, let's call it P1, and this person has a momentum P2. And you just go like, oh, M1V1 plus M2V2. Notice that since one goes to the left, one goes to the right, one is ultimately going to have a positive velocity and the other one a negative velocity. And those two would cancel out. In fact, their momentums would be exactly the same in this situation. So other ones you might see, uh, well, one goes and it bounces, like one, two collide, and they bounce off each other. One goes this way, one goes this way. In this situation, just remember that this one does have a negative velocity. That will be important. All right, let's look at number two. The next question type you should expect to see is actually technically an energy question, but it's usually in the context of a momentum type of problem. And it's just to figure out how much energy is lost. Now, the key for this is you solve the momentum part of the problem first and then you calculate the difference in kinetic energies. Now sometimes the kinetic energies will be the same. And when that's true, we call this a perfectly elastic collision. And there will often be questions actually where they say they start off with the problem is perfectly elastic and the question is essentially checking to make sure you understand. That means your kinetic energies will be conserved. So let's go back to the question we did earlier. You have uh, one mass colliding with the second mass. And you know the most common mistake I'll see my students do is actually when they say, oh, find the V final, they'll start doing kinetic energy problems like, oh, kinetic energy initial equals kinetic energy final. Well, the problem is, is in this collision, there's going to be energy that's lost. And that means this will not work. The two kinetic energies are not equal to each other. So what you would do is you could calculate this energy lost, and then you would do, you'd find the kinetic, kinetic energy to start with, you'd find the kinetic energy to end, and then you'd notice that they're not the same. This might be like 20 joules, this might be like 15 joules. That tells you that your energy lost is therefore five joules. Question number three is force time graphs. The key thing to remember with these is that the area under this curve is going to be our impulse, and then impulse is equal to our change in momentum, which would be mass times change in velocity. So let's do an example of this. So let's say we have a graph that looks like this, and we want to find um, the impulse of this graph. You would just find the area underneath. So for example, the area of this would be 2 times 3, or 6 newton seconds, and the area of this would be 1 half, 2 times 2, or 2 newton seconds. 
So the total impulse in this case would be 8 newton seconds. Now another question they might ask is, what is the change in momentum? Well, that would be 8, right? 8 kilogram meters per second. Or maybe they say the mass is 2 kilograms. What's the change in velocity? Well, in that case, you have mass times the change in velocity is 8. So delta V would be 8 over 2, or 4 meters per second. I do want to point out that there's another one, and if you've been watching my videos, you know this, that's force distance. It's very similar looking, but in this case, from this, you find work. You do the area, you find work, and then that's equal to change in kinetic. In fact, you will probably see both of these graphs on the exam. Question number four, this is kind of almost a trick question, to be honest. So you might see a collision problem. They say, oh, it's a velocity of this mass after or the velocity of this mass before or something like that. But be on the lookout for when they say, what's the velocity of the center of the mass? So they're not asking about an individual mass, but the center of the mass. When you see that, the key idea is that it's the same. The velocity of the center mass before is equal to the velocity of the center mass after. So for this one, just be on the lookout for the language of this. So for example, if we go to the original question and they say, mm, what's the velocity of the center of mass before the collision? And you may be like, oh, okay, so this has a V initial, right? This has a V initial here of zero. So what is it? Well, if you look at this mass, it's moving off as one single mass, right? So the velocity of the center mass of this is obviously what we calculated earlier. So what's the answer? Well, it's the same. So the velocity of the center mass after is equal to the velocity of the center mass before. So this would be your answer in this situation. Or another example might be kind of the reverse of this. So maybe you have two masses moving off with a velocity, say, V1, and then they explode or something. They're moving this way, and then they explode, and one goes this way, and one goes that way, and they say, what's the velocity of blah, blah, blah? And you're like, oh, maybe they're asking about this one, or maybe they're asking about this one. But really what they're asking is, well, what's the velocity of the center of mass? Well, whatever it is before, in this case, V1, that's what it's going to be afterwards. And so that would be the same for both. All right, let's do the last question. So the last question type is really um, kind of a concept. And it's that you understand when something bounces, when you have a collision where something bounces, that's going to have a greater change of momentum compared to um, other situations. And when you actually calculate it, you have one, say, going to the right, and one, when it bounces, it rebounds to the left. And so that's going to have a bigger change. In fact, you're essentially adding those two momentums up. So let's look at a common example. Let's say you have one where you have a ball. Let's say it hits like a piece of wood and bounces off this direction. You have another one. Let's say it hits a piece of wood and sticks, okay, and they move off together. And then the third one, maybe it goes through the piece of wood this way. And they kind of ask you, like, which one, you know, if the wood moves, which one causes the wood to move faster afterwards? And so, again, the key is noticing. Let's just do some numbers here. Let's say this one's moving with a momentum of 5, and this one rebounds with a momentum of 4. Well, that's going to ha have a change in momentum of 5 plus 4, because we have 5 going one way and negative 4 going the opposite way. So that's a change in momentum of, say, 9 kilogram meters per second. So remember, that means that change in momentum goes into this block. So this block would now have a change in momentum of 9. Momentum's got to be conserved, right? Let's skip down to this third case, because in this case, let's say this has a momentum of 5. Now, since it goes through it, it still has a significant amount of momentum afterwards. Let's say maybe it changes to a momentum of 4. Well, that means that this little guy right here, so remember, momentum's got to be conserved. 
So if our initial momentum is five, and then the bullet now has four, that means this little block right here must have a momentum of one. So much less, right? Compared to this one, it had nine. This one now it has one. It's gonna be moving much slower. And then the second case is kind of in between, right? So the bullet's gonna slow down or the ball's gonna slow down. Maybe it starts with five. Maybe its momentum afterwards goes all the way down to one. And so that means now the block is gonna take on four kilogram meters per second of momentum. So this would be kind of like the medium case. So anyways, just be on the lookout for the rebound. Um, and the key is don't forget that this is, you're essentially adding the momentums here, five, plus four rather than five minus four. So those are the most common momentum problems you should see. Can't guarantee that all five of them will be on there, but you should see two or three for sure. So I just kind of went over the basics of these. I'll go ahead and link in the notes below some more detailed examples of um, all these problems that I did today. All right, good luck everybody.